Okay, today is day eight of our AI agent learning journey. Now we are jumping into a topic that really blew my mind when I first heard about it. That is RAG and vector databases. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding on what RAG is, what vector databases are, and how RAG uses them to fetch data. In our future videos, we'll actually build a RAG chatbot so things become more clear with hands-on examples. So subscribe and get ready for that. I know words like RAG, vector databases, these sound a bit technical, but don't worry about it. I'll make it simple for you. Okay, first, what's the problem are solving. When we ask something in ChatGPT, it gives an answer based on whatever it learned during its training. This sounds great, but there's an issue. The trained knowledge is basically frozen. It doesn't know anything new after its training ended. Now imagine you want your AI to answer questions about your company docs, your class notes, or even a PDF you downloaded yesterday. The AI can't answer from those PDFs or documents because it doesn't even know that they exist. That's the exact problem RAG solves. So. What is RAG? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Sounds big, but it's actually simple. Normally, the AI answers from what it already knows. But with RAG, we let the AI model to go check our documents before answering. It's like after we ask a question, a AI model says like, wait, let me go through your documents and then give you an answer. This we call it as retrieval part. It goes and finds the right info. And then comes the generation part. Here it uses the info to create a better and accurate answer. This whole process is called retrieval augmented generation. Now let's talk about why this is such a big deal. First of all, we'll get up to date answer because AI is not relying on its old training data. It is actually pulling info from our current documents. So if you add a document to that folder yesterday, AI can already use that. And here is the another big benefit. It reduces the weird and made up answers. Uh, you know, sometimes AI will just uh, make things up. Like this process is called as AI hallucination. With RAG, we will not face any of these issues because it uses the real information that we have actually given it. Also, we can trust the output from RAG. In fact, most of the RAG documents even tells us exactly where the answer came from. Like basically showing us the source it used to respond. That's super helpful when we want transparency. Another cool thing is you don't have to retrain the model every time you make some changes to your data. Just update the docs in that particular folder and boom, it works. No need to mess with those complicated retraining processes. And finally, this is really good for privacy. We can actually run this all locally on our own machine without sending the data to the cloud. That means our data stays safe and private. So yeah, RAG is awesome. But for RAG to work, we need a way to store and search through all our information. And that's where vector databases come in. Let me explain you in a simple way. Usually when we search something, we rely on keywords. For example, like if you type iPhone battery, it looks for those exact words. But vector databases work differently. They search based on meaning. Here's how they do it. Every piece of text in your documents gets turned into a list of numbers called a vector embedding. These numbers capture what the sentence means. So let's say your doc says the iPhone 16 Pro Max has best battery life. The sentence format becomes something like just a list of numbers. Now if you ask which phone has the best battery performance, your question also gets turned into numbers and the vector database compares those two number lists and goes. It thinks something like this. Even the words are not same, but they have close meaning. That's the magic of vector search. It's not looking for the exact words, it's actually looking for the meaning. Now, to check which vectors are close, we have two methods. This involves a little bit of math, but it's not scary and I will not dive deeper into that because even I was very bad at math. So let's keep it simple. Okay, the first method is Euclidean distance. It's just the straight line between two points. Shorter equals to more similar. The second one is cosine similarity, which checks if two arrows are pointing in the same direction. Same direction equal to similar meaning. Using these methods, the database finds the chunks of data that are most relevant and sends them to AI to answer our questions. That's how vector databases work for us. All right, let's do a quick recap on what we have covered today. RAG allows our AI to use real documents to answer questions, not just rely on its old training data. Vector databases store your information based on meaning not just relying on keywords. Then we have vector embeddings. These are basically number lists that represent the meaning of text. This is how AI understands what our documents are really about. And finally, similarity search helps the AI to find the most relevant information. Even if the question is worded differently from the original text, it's all about matching meanings, not just exact words. This is how modern AI agents are being built and now we can build them too. So that's it for day I. I think we are done with the theory side of things. We have now covered almost all the basics starting from what are AI agents all the way to RAG and vector databases. So if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments. I'll try to learn and share it with you in our upcoming videos. But from the next video onwards, we are jumping into the fun part that is building 
AI agents. We'll build our first AI agent and also we'll try to build rag chatbots in our future videos. From now on, it's going to be all about building and experimenting things. So it's going to be exciting and interesting for sure. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, like and share it to your friends. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.